Hello, welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go through the basics of what snippets are in Visual Studio Code with the idea then of building our own snippets. So the first question, what are snippets? So you probably already utilized them before if you've used Visual Studio Code, maybe here in, I'm here in, in JavaScript, so I type in the word while, and you can see here we have a list of different options. So the top option here is going to try and end the, the word IntelliSense. And the second option here is a code snippet. So if I click on this, it's then going to give me all of the different elements I need to create a while statement. So you can start to potentially see how using snippets can provide a huge time saving, both in minimizing typing code and also potentially looking up syntax for commonly needed tasks. Visual Studio Code obviously pr provides a whole heap of different snippets, um, but there are times when you want to create your own. So let's take a look at how we can create our own snippets. There is a few different decisions that you need to make before you start creating a snippet. You need to ask yourself whether the snippet is associated to a language or all languages. Maybe it's associated to a project or maybe you want it for all projects globally. So let's go ahead and build a new snippet. Whether you're in Windows or Mac is slightly different, but I'm just going to go to code in the menu in Mac. You can't see it. Go into services, oh sorry, preferences, sorry, and user snippets. So on Windows, I think it's preferences, user snippets um, from the menu. So let's go in and user snippets. So here I can select my language. Um, you can see at the top here, I've already utilized JavaScript. So JavaScript is up here. So I'm going to select JavaScript. So notice that this file is a .json file. So that's what we're going to be entering into this file. Um, so I can go ahead and right click and reveal in the finder to see where it's located. That can be useful. So you will be presented here with an example. So let's just go ahead and have a look at this example and build our own. So first of all, then let's just give it a name. So I'm just going to call this the, uh, the hello world. And then we have a prefix. So this prefix basically defines the trigger. So if I type in log, then this is going to appear, the, the snippet's going to appear. So here I can define multiple um, prefix. So for example, maybe I want to say hello, and then I'll create a second one, world. So we can have multiple prefixes. So this is going to be the keyword, if you like, that's going to initiate the, it's going to initiate the snippet. The next component is the body. So this can be one or more lines of code, uh, which will essentially be the actual snippet that gets inserted. So let's just go ahead and change this slightly. There we go. So in addition, you can see there's an optional description here um, that you can utilize. The hello world script snippet. Okay. So this is instance. As soon as you've created this, if I now go back into my JavaScript file and type in hello, you can see that the snippet is now available. Some additional useful tools here are placeholders. So placeholders allows us to set up components in the actual body where we can tab through. So imagine that this function here took in three parameters. I could define three different placeholders and tab through them. And I can give them a number so to define how I tab through them. So for example, uh, let's let, let, let this be tab one. And then I can type in a word that will appear here. So maybe this is some sort of um, integer maybe that needs to be placed here or string. Um, and then let's just go for an additional so let's just create a second parameter here. So this can be number two, and this can be another string, for example. Okay, so let's give that a go. Um, so we type in hello, and you can see now we've got these two. And you didn't see it there, but I tabbed through, and so we'll just do that again. Hello. So you can see that the I'm going to type something here straight away, and it appears in this first placeholder, then I tab again, and now I'm over in the second placeholder. 
The placeholder traversal order is ascending by number and it starts from zero. The global snippet works in exactly the same way. So let's go ahead and go back into your menu, go back into user snippets. And here we now have an option of new global snippet file. So I just got to need, need to just give us a name, I just call this global. And then notice that it uses a prefix of dot code dash snippets. And then from here, we can just paste in what we had before. We can just watch this work in exactly the same way. But of course, now it's global, so it'll work with all different languages. So for example, let's just go ahead and make an example uh, Python file. Uh, so let's have a look on here. And you can see that we have this global snippet. So we have previously seen how we can create these values here predefined values if you like because remember these can be the actual values uh, potentially that you want to use or the default values and then you can override them by tabbing through them so there are other values that you can enter so let's go ahead and just enter the current year so let's just give this a go and you can see there it picks up the current year as you might imagine there's a whole heap of these just a case of going over to the visual studio code documentation uh, and then looking at snippets and there you'll find all the list of the different options. So hopefully a useful brief introduction to Visual Studio Code snippets. If you do have any interesting snippets that are worth mentioning, please leave them in the comments. If I have missed out something blatantly obvious, please let me know, leave a comment and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.